both of these CPUs are now more than 10 years old at this point. Back in the day, both of them represented quite viable options for a budget gamer, especially the second and third generation of Core i5s, with the FX CPUs receiving quite a lot of backlash for its poor performance, especially in games. Nowadays, they are both available on the used market for quite a reasonable price, with the i5 going for as low as $15 to $20. The FX CPU, on the other hand, is a bit more expensive, at least in my country, where you can find it for around $20 to $30. So the question is, which one of these two should you choose in 2022 for a low-end budget system? Looking at the basic specs, the FX CPU looks like the more viable option, with a higher frequency and supposedly higher core count. As we all know, the FX CPUs had quite a lot of controversy when it comes to the core count of these CPUs. Back in the day, games weren't really optimized for even quad cores, let alone a 6-core CPU, but nowadays, Games tend to use more cores and more threads, so maybe the alleged 6 cores and 6 threads of the FX CPUs can help out in 2022. But of course, there is only one way to find that out. In the benchmarks. First up, a little bit of a synthetic benchmark, with Cinebench R20 and the Core i5 taking the win over the FX CPU in both single and multi-threaded benchmarks. You may see that the FX CPU is recognized by Cinebench as a 3-core CPU with 6 threads, and that's the main controversy that I talked about for the FX CPUs. So now with the synthetic benchmarks showing some of the difference between the CPUs, let's move on to some real gaming. Indon Com Deliverance is really well known to be CPU intensive, and that really shows with the FX CPU. But the Core i5 on the other hand also struggles to deliver 30 FPS. Still, the FPS is much higher than the FX CPU, where the FPS does drop below 20 many times. The average frame rates also show that the i5 performs so much better in this game. Although, when you leave a demanding area like this one, you get much higher FPS on both of these. Yet again, the i5 delivers higher FPS even at that time. So it's safe to say that the Core i5 gets the win for Kingdom Come Deliverance. Next up on the benchmark list is Assassin's Creed Valhalla which surprisingly runs much better on the FX CPU, with overall higher average figures, but as you can see, the percentile figures are a bit better on the Core i5. But in my opinion, the FX CPU performs much better here. Seems like AC Valhalla really likes the FX architecture, and can utilize its full potential. Honestly, I expected the Core i5 to wipe the floor with the FX CPU today, in all games tested. But as it turns out, the FX CPU has still left some power in it to fight against the i5. So let's move on and see how it turns out at the end. In another quite intensive game on the CPU side of things, the Core i5 once again takes the win. As you can see, the on-screen footage doesn't really look that smooth on the i5 CPU. That's due to the recording software sometimes going wild in the Mafia remake. Without the recording, the gameplay is much smoother, as you can tell by the average figures. So back on the winning track for the i5 CPU. Elden Ring delivers a similar story to Kingdom Come Deliverance, with the FX CPU struggling to even hit 20 FPS most of the time, dropping into the mid-teens. On the other hand, the i5's performance isn't really that great either, but the FPS is much more stable and stays above 30 most of the time. So yet again, the i5 takes the win here. Moving on to an older title, namely The Witcher 3, I thought the FX performance here was great, till I saw what the i5 can do, delivering over 50 FPS more in some areas. So it's safe to say that the i5 is a much better CPU even for older games. I was honestly expecting the FX 6300 to deliver a bit more of a fight in The Witcher 3 at least, but as you can see, the i5 shows the dominance here. <music> Moving on to another Ubisoft title, I was expecting the FX CPU to do much better considering the AC Valhalla results. But yet again, the i5 takes the win here as well. But both of the CPUs don't really deliver the smoothest experience possible, as you can see by the frame time graph. Seems like nothing much has changed in the past decade, with the FX CPU still being bad for gaming. 
The only problem in modern gaming is that they are even worse than they were before. To be honest, they didn't really age well. The Core i5 on the other hand shows its age, but for a 11 year old CPU it can still hold up pretty well in all the modern titles. And to add to that, it's the cheaper option of the two, with the FX6300 not being able to compete with even the last generation Core i5s. So if your budget isn't the greatest, and you're after a decently capable CPU, you may consider the i5-2500, or even better, go for the third generation i5-3570, for just about $10 more. You should disregard any of the FX CPUs in my opinion. Those are honestly overpriced, and their performance not even able to compete against the second gen i5. And keep in mind, the 6300 came out in 2012, which means it was meant to compete against the third generation of i5s. As it is apparent, that was not really the case, neither back then or today. If anything, the problem called FX CPUs only got worse over time. Nothing much left to be said, other than that the 1155 socket offers some incredible CPUs. And stay away from the FX processors. These represent great value only if received as a gift, to be honest. Thank you very much for tuning in, a lot more interesting tests to follow, so maybe subscribe, check out those as well.